Well, we're launching out today. We've got a pretty good little breeze on the... Uh, got a pretty good little breeze on the creek today. Anyway, I made a mistake yesterday. <clears throat> First of all, excuse me, uh, clear my voice all the time. We are, right now we're having a uh, pollen storm in this part of the country. And it seems like I'm coughing and sneezing and clearing my voice all the time. But anyway, Yesterday when I did my test, I also might be getting some wind noise out. I hope not with this uh, micro microphone on this GoPro Pro camera. But yesterday when I launched out, I, uh, on my first test, I didn't have my watch set. I didn't have my watch at all. And I don't know exactly how long I got to uh, run this motor for the test. So today I've got my watch on. i got the chronograph going. So we'll get a, uh, some timing on how long this, uh, this thing's working today. As you can see, it's a pretty day. It's a little bit of a breeze, but not too bad. It'd probably slow us down. We're going uh, downstream on Stevens Creek. There on the uh, left-hand side, a little side inlet that uh, heads up by my neighbor's, in front of my neighbor's property, and continues on down to a couple more houses down on that inlet. And uh, if you continued on down through there, it goes on and hits uh, Stevens Creek, probably about a between a quarter and a half mile on down the creek. Okay, right now it says we're doing about uh, 2.7 miles per hour. Off in the distance I can hear the uh, loggers cutting the, cutting the wood over in the National Forest. That's a sound you frequently hear around here. You know, over to the right you can see, I don't know if you can see it at this distance, but a couple of trees, cypress trees out in the water. I love that look. Along the creek, we've got a lot of cypress trees, and you'll also see sycamore and other uh, trees that are native to the swampland. Different times of the year, there's quite a quite a collection of aquatic birds also on the creek. Very interesting. Uh, love to look at them. We get a lot of egrets and herons, and occasionally, you know, you'll have a You'll see a, a pack of a uh, flock of Canadian geese in a single line. It, I've counted as many as 50 in a single line, just uh, paddling their way up the creek. And then at the end of the uh, nesting season, you'll see them paddling down the creek, and at some point they launch out and head to whichever direction they're headed. Egrets, uh, I don't know if they're year-round residents or not, but you, you often see them, although I'm not, uh, seems like the last couple of weeks I haven't seen much in the way of, uh, of birds at all, aquatic birds, and uh, although yesterday when I was out on the creek I did spot a blue heron and I have seen a few of those, but I haven't seen as many egrets as I normally see. 
I'm starting to see the turtles. Uh, you can't see it from here. But over there in the distance on a log, I can see a pretty good sized turtle. And then on another log to the right in the distance, it looks like about four or five turtles up on the log. But uh, it won't be long. You'll look out on these logs and it'll be just one turtle after another on the logs and at, at different time or at a certain time of the year when I'm out working in the yard I'll I'll happen upon a turtle that's heading up into the woods to go nest and sometimes I have to pick them up out of the middle of the road before they get run over. I don't know if they go back to some place where they were born or hatched or whatever. But uh at different times of years, you're going to see a, a whole lot of turtles out here on this creek and also back up in the yard. This uh, something you frequently see around here is the trees down in the, uh, down in the creek. In fact, we have a lot of debris in the creek uh, because of the trees that grow up around, around the banks. And you can see one right over there where it's collapsed and the roots, roots are... Uh, haven't quite given way yet, but uh, these trees just collapse into the creek, and at some point they they dislodge and work themselves down the creek. Farther on down, <clears throat> uh, you'll see some spots where they where they uh, form almost islands in the middle of the creek. And there's like a I think maybe a sycamore tree overhanging uh it's overhanging the water there looks like a little spanish moss off of it back up under there yeah here's some more here's some more spanish moss up here i wish i could get that to start growing on my property Well, you can't see it because of the glare, but down here on my Garmin, I'm indicating 4.1 miles per hour. When I tested yesterday, the best I could get was about 3.7. Well, one thing I did was raise the uh, outriggers so that they're not resting in the water. That may have helped some. But whatever I did uh, today, I'm getting, I think I've gotten up to 4.1 miles per hour, which is pretty good. And the way this uh, creek is set up, like I say, the name is Creek, and it looks like, you know, it looks for a, like a river <laughs> by anything that I could judge waterways by. But uh, back in 1914, I think it was about 1914, they built a dam on the Savannah River just on the downstream side where Stevens Creek enters the savannah and I believe this is backup water from that dam. Now there's been a discussion about uh, doing away with that dam and that would lower the water you know water level quite a bit. It would also uh, in our case we get a I'm not sure what that is. That'd be a hawk. In our case, that would uh, eliminate some of the problems we have. We have about, oh, since we've been here about once or twice, maybe three times a year, we might get a little bit of flooding in the backyard. And if they did lower the level in this area, that would certainly help out on that flooding problem. But at the same time, it also do away with this, uh, this type of an experience here. Uh, so I have kind of mixed emotions on the uh, on the subject of whether or not they do away that that ancient dam. Yeah. You can you, over here on the uh, right right hand side there where I've got the camera pointing. You can see one of those uh, buildups of. Uh, old logs and other debris out in the middle of the middle of the creek.
that box on the post over there is a, uh, a box they build for wood ducks. And you see, you see uh, quite a few of them up and down the creek. I've got one on my property, but I think I'm going to have to move. Uh, you wrap, you have to wrap the post with some sort of metal flashing in order to keep the raccoons and the cats from getting up in there and getting into the, getting the eggs. This year, when I first uh, when I first mowed my property down by the creek, I noticed that uh, the eggs there were, had been some eggs laid in that box and. Uh, they were all on the ground broken, so one of these days I'm going to have to get out and get some more uh, aluminum flashing and move the flashing farther up the uh, post so that they won't be able to get near that uh, the opening to that box. You can't see it at this distance, but uh, there are quite a few turtles out on these logs. As you approach, though, that once you get a little bit closer to them, they start uh, heading for the water. Okay, over here's got a nice setup. Pontoon boat, boat house, ramp going back. His house sits up on a hill, high enough out of the water where he shouldn't have any trouble with flooding. Pretty day. We're probably about a half mile downstream right now from the house. Well, we're about a mile down from the house right now. And I, I'm not sure if my battery's dying or the uh, current's picked up. We're actually going into a little bit more of a wind. You may be able to hear it on this uh, microphone on this camera. And my speed has dropped off to about 2.3 miles per hour in my f uh, fourth speed setting, which is my cruising mode. Earlier on, I was getting about three miles per hour, which is pretty good. Like I said, it could be uh, just we got more current and trying to battle through that wind. Sure is a pleasant day out today. I think uh, if it wasn't for that wind, it might be a little bit hot. Well, just, that's some kind of bird out in the water down there. It's a little bit far out for you to see him, but there's something splashing around in the water. Head down there if we can see if we can see it. Yeah, he just took off. I don't know if you can see him over there or not. Also over there on the tip of this island up here in this direction is all along that log on the end toward the right there's a string of string of turtles we get up there they'll head for the water Looks like all but two have gone in the water. Well, one of them just went. He's a big guy. He's thinking about it. There he goes. Oh, these marsh grasses look pretty.
when the water's lower out here, you have to be a little bit more careful. I haven't hit anything yet, but uh, in this creek, there's a lot of ancient uh, cypress trees. The tops are still up near the surface of the water, and when water gets low, you can actually bang one of those things. Also, there's some logs that get snagged in the mud, and they might be tilted at an angle, and you come racing down the creek and right up on one of those logs, it's just before the surface, it could uh, tilt you over a little bit. I watch these guys in their fishing boats running up and down the creek, and some of them go at pretty good speed. Uh, they must, I imagine most of them have done this creek enough where they're pretty well familiar with the channel and knows, knows, know where the obstructions are. Well, it sure is pretty out here today. I don't know what it is, but he's got, he apparently caught something. He's got it in his talons. A bird up there. Maybe a fish. And down, it looks like we're in an area of some hills here. And it looks like pretty nice houses around the, on the banks of the creek. You can see these obstructions in the water. And like I was saying before, it, when the water's a little bit lower, they can be quite hazardous. I still am a little bit apprehensive. Uh, you know, if you just bump one, it's enough to it. It could be if it's submerged at an angle. Like I mentioned before, you could ride up on that thing without knowing and get tipped to a to a point that might might offset you and put you in the water. I've got my personal flotation device on, so I shouldn't have any problem. That's some nice nice moss over there on those trees. I wonder if you can wonder if you can uh, trans transplant that stuff. Nice little uh, out, in, out in the stream here, this cypress tree. Out. It looks like uh, some cypress tree had taken root on the, maybe on the leftover of another tree. I don't know. Some of you folks in the flora and fauna may know more about that sort of stuff than I do. Well, I got a heron over there. You probably can't see him. He just just sat down on the other side of that uh, marsh grass over there. And another one downstream. I know you can't see him there. That one. It looks like he may be at the same spot. It might be a pair. One of the things you can't, uh, you never, you never know about this uh, Stevens Creek is 
which way the, the water's flowing. Now, like I said, we're headed downstream, but uh, for all I know, the current is headed in the opposite direction. We're, uh, Stevens Creek is located uh, just upstream from the mouth of Stevens Creek Dam, and it heads up northeast into uh, on the South Carolina side of the Savannah. Oh, there, there's one over there. Well, you can't see him. So there's some there's some blue herons over there in that marsh grass. But uh, the flow is dependent on what's happening between the Stevens Creek Dam, which I mentioned earlier, I think was built around 1914, 1915. A hydroelectric dam, and I think it's the oldest continuous operating hydroelectric dam uh, in the state of Georgia, although at one side of it's in South Carolina. And uh, I think about 12 miles upstream, you have the, the dam on Clark Hill if you're a Georgian, or Lake Strom Thurmond if you're a South Carolinian. And the flow of water between Clark Hill and and the amount of outflow on uh, the Stevens Creek Dam, I believe, is what determines which way this water is headed. I notice, uh, you know, if they're they're trying to uh, often they're trying to protect the downstream when we get the the big uh, system, weather systems that move in and dump a bunch of water in this area. They try to protect downstream areas from flooding and so they'll, areas like this, they'll, they'll trap some of that water from going downstream. And, and I, I've noticed that uh, when we are starting to get the water rising to a dangerous level, you'll have somebody from the, some sort of authority uh, come by the house frequently to check the water level in the back, you know, that's coming up in the back of people's yards, make sure it doesn't endanger their houses. And then when everything is uh, safe for them to release the water downstream, it's almost like they pull a plug in a, in a bathtub, it disappears so quick. We're not too far from Savannah. I think we've done pretty good. I'm going to turn around here in a little bit. Uh, we've been on the go a little over 57 minutes. My speed's currently fluctuating. I'm in the uh, fourth, fourth speed mode, which is my cruise mode. Speeds fluctuating between uh, 2.3 and 2.5 miles per hour. And like I mentioned earlier, that I think that has to do with both the flow of the water and also the fact how much wind we're going into. Right now, the wind, we got a little bit of wind, but nothing, nothing uh, real bad. I just hit an hour, so we're at least two, uh, two, and a half, or two and a half miles, probably downstream from the house. Uh, I mentioned in an earlier video that when I put this system together, I, I, I recently changed batteries and went with a small lithium battery. And I've tested it, had the uh, had the battery in a tank and ran the battery for up to four hours in the tank, but you never can tell, you know, how something's going to uh, 
work under a control condition and and how it works when you're actually uh, putting it on to put it into a, into a, the uh, purpose for which it is built. So anyway, we're going to come about, head back to the house, and see what things look like going upstream. Well, kind of like I suspected, just just coming about and heading in the opposite direction. I've already uh, I've gone from about 2.5 miles an hour to uh, 3 3.0 3.1 miles per hour. Feels like the wind's kind of dropped off, although that flag over there is still waving. But I'm not feeling any kind of breeze right now. It could be because I'm going with the wind. Yeah, right now it's, it's bouncing back between 3.0 and 3.1 miles per hour. I think I'll put it in the high speed mode and see what happens. Uh, I've been nailed against the back of the sea here. I feel the need for speed. Yeah, those, those herons were congregating over in that... Uh, marsh grass over there. Yeah, we're up to 4.1, 4.0 miles per hour. That's what I was getting earlier when I first uh, launched the thing, so that's pretty good. Let's see if it'll get us all the way back home in this uh, high speed mode. I don't know if I can take the uh, the excitement or the rush of going this fast. Well, I slowed it back down a little bit. Uh, slow it down a little bit more. Well, cruise through this inlet, and this will give you folks a little chance, better, better view of the the grasses and the other other plants in the area. See, that's a little cypress tree out there in the middle of all that.
spotted uh, this escaped trailer on the uh, on the internet. It's a little fifth wheel, and I think the empty weight is something like 3,885 pounds. And I thought, hell, even my little old tra truck could handle that kind of weight. And a little bit above my budget, but I finally said heck with it and went ahead and popped for the thing. But anyway, we're going to go up there and uh, pick up the Escape 5.0 TA and make a big trip on the way back. On the way up there, I've traveled back and forth to Montana, I, you know, probably a dozen times or more. So that's that's not much of a, you know, it's, I haven't been back up there since I moved down in 2014, but that's really not much of an adventure uh, as many times as I've done it. And I suspect my brother and I, our purpose will be just to get up to uh, Chilliwack, British Columbia as quick as we can. And then on the way back, our only schedule is going to be what we want to see and how much time it takes to see it. And uh, so I'll be getting some videos of that trip and also I, there is a guy on, uh, on the internet, I think he's called the Campologist that has a 5.0 TA and he's the only guy I see on the internet with any videos of that trailer and I was I was just dying to see more videos of that trailer the guy does a real good good job the campologist with his videos but I want to I want to do a little bit more focus on the uh, on the on the trailer for those people that might be interested in that particular model once again, I do not work for the company. They're not sell, paying me any money. They're not giving me anything. In fact, I'm giving them a whole lot of money. But anyway, I'll be uh, I'll be trying to do some videos of that uh, trailer also. Now we're coming back into my neighborhood. That house up at uh, 12 o'clock, and like I told you folks that are not used to uh, the clock reference for the direction that's uh, straight ahead. That guy is just down the street and around the bend from my house.
Well, we're coming up on my uh, my little piece of the world. So I'll be putting in the port here in just a second. I'll have a couple minutes. And uh, just wanted to say I hope you had a good day, as good a day as I did, wherever it was and whatever you were doing. And uh, hopefully I get to Get to send you some videos here soon, especially once we get out west and start seeing some uh, more exciting parts of the country. Although I just, I left, uh, well, some people in Montana used to say I had the prettiest view in Montana from my front porch, but uh, this is a different kind of beauty here and I just, I just thoroughly enjoy it. Anyway, good day, and uh, I'll uh, talk to you later.